start the Zoom, the live feed. We are live on YouTube, everybody. Um, Ali, I'll um, I'll take back what I said. Don't don't turn off. We're all friends here, so uh, it's good to see you in you know, on the screen. So it's fine. Thank and you. You'll be you'll be talking to your agenda. Okay, we are now live, and um, right. Well, thank you, everybody, for turning up uh, today to the uh, uh, meeting of the Transport Strategy Group. Um, we're doing this on Zoom um, because there are well, there are some decisions to be made, but we are an advisory committee, so therefore, any any proper decisions. Will be will be done at planning if, if we have any going forward. So that's why we are we are we are doing it on Zoom at the moment. So Fiona, do we have any apologies for absence, please? Yes, I've received apologies from Hester George, Patrick Fleming, and um, Jackie Walker that she's having internet problems. If she can solve them, she she may join us later. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Uh, any declarations of interest from members of the committee on items on the agenda? Okay, I see none. Um, we have no members of the public apart from Ali's here, who will um, be be talking um, about about a signage project. Um, so, uh, item four minutes. Um, can I propose that we accept the minutes? Um, could I have a seconder, please? Thanks, Ken. Um, are there any changes to it? I should have asked that first, but um, I think they were a fairly true record of 10th of February. So uh, all those in favour of accepting the minutes, please. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, which brings us on to item five. What I'm going to try and do Unlike I did at Lawrence, unlike I did at full council last night, I'm going to try and keep this meeting to an hour if we can, um, because there are there's a lot of reporting back at this meeting. So we're looking at five or six minutes per item. Um, and everybody, if I talk too much, just tell me to shut up. That's absolutely fine. And, and Lawrence, you can be the chief person to say, Stefan, just be quiet and uh, get on with it. Right. Um, okay, item five. Um, Ali, could I ask, how do you say your surname, please? So that, sorry? Hagedorn. Hagedorn. Oh, right, okay. Well, I'm, I'm Dutch originally. <laughs> right, okay. Well, Ali, we are, um, we're on first name terms at this committee. So um, it's uh, it's the committee have been sent your report, um, and therefore I would like you to present it, please. Yes. Thank you. Off you go. Yeah. So I created a short um, uh, PowerPoint presentation on the back of uh, you know the the word document that uh, that you received. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to share my screen and bring that uh, bring that up uh, to go through. Uh, so first of all, my um, my uh, background is uh, uh, so I'm from Walkers or Welcome in uh, in Henley on Thames, uh, and we do a number of uh, projects. So this is one of the things that has come up recently as something that we would would like to do. Uh, let me see if I can go full screen here as well. Yeah. So, uh, so this is about a display board with walks in Henley. Um, so, uh, I think um, there are many reasons for this, but I listed a few. Um, so, government has a strategy to focus more on walking and cycling. Um, in and after lockdown, more people are interested in uh, in walking. Um, there are more dog owners, which um, uh, actually, well, people uh, in general, a lot of people do not know actually where they can go, cannot read a map, for example. For example. 
um, there are both benefits for residents and uh, also it uh, helps encourage visitors uh, to the town and you know have something for them to do. Uh, and it will also complement the strategy of placing posts to walk into town, uh, which uh, I believe Fiona will uh, go into in uh, in the next uh, in the, into the next point on the agenda. Um, so this is some of the background. I'm I'm sure you can think of more, but uh, from my perspective, these are some of the the uh, the backgrounds for why we do it. Um, so I've created uh, like a, a draft design of the display board, which was also present in the in the Word uh, document. Uh, it's all draft, um, but it would be uh, I wanted to be really, really we wanted to be really uh, you know visual with nice photos and maybe uh, as you can see here little maps of the various walks uh, that would be proposed. Uh, and some general information about uh, walkers are welcome at the top uh, here. And then listing the, the so I've selected 15 walks. Um, and uh, also there is um, a little inset here uh, at the bottom where uh, some seasonal information can be put in. So this is, let's say the draft uh, design that can of course be changed. Um, then uh, a little bit about the walks that I've selected, 15 uh, different walks with uh, uh, different lengths uh, going in all directions uh, of, uh, of Hen from Henley and, and around uh, the, the town. Some of them are quite far, some of them actually go, uh, you, you take uh, the bus and then walk back, for example, uh, to, uh, to Goring. Um, some of them are quite short, like one and a half miles or 1.2 miles. Uh, so something for everybody, uh, really. Uh, and then uh, a little bit, how does it uh, how does it work? Oh, uh, uh, how does it work? Uh, so you may have seen on that on the board uh, on the board next to each of the 15 walks, there is a little QR code next uh, to the walk. So when you scan that QR code, it will bring you to uh, an application called Outdoor Active. Um, uh, this can be downloaded uh, for free uh, if it's not yet on your phone. And then without any cost, you can then uh, just follow the route on your phone. Uh, so it actually follows the uh, uh, you know where you are walking, and then you can actually put the the uh, voice up as well, saying, "Oh, you have to turn left or right." And so it's really, really good. Um, you can also, uh, instead of uh, scanning the QR code, you can also download the routes uh, from the uh, Walkers are Welcome uh, handy website, and then just uh, uh, again follow the route. On the map on your uh, on your phone. For people who don't have a, a smartphone, um, uh, the proposal is is that they could um, uh, uh, get a copy of uh, something like this, which I've created uh, similarly for the um, for the youth hostel in Goring, uh, which is double-sided A4 that you could purchase uh, at the Henley Information Office for a very small amount, maybe just a copy cost, um, and with a map. And, uh, and here you have to uh, be able to just read the map. Uh, so it, it has a little bit of information. It also has the QR code again, if people can use uh, the, um, uh, you know, the, it on the smartphone. Uh, and it has a couple of photos in here, the profile, you know, how much up and down does it go, the length of the walk. So, um, and these maps, they do not require a copyright, just an acknowledgement uh, to OpenStreetMap and partners, actually. Um, so, um, 
So this is thought to be a, um, quite a, a big sign, similar perhaps to the sign that you see here on the Great Grace Road uh, car park. Um, and that is actually one of the locations where we could place it, perhaps, you know, on the other side of this sign, for example. Uh, or it could go um, uh, opposite station. Uh, if you come out of the station, you see here the public toilets, and it could, for example, be placed somewhere here. Uh, or another um, possible location could perhaps be Singers Park, um, perhaps uh, here, uh, you know, just behind, uh, in between the benches, uh, for example, facing the river. Um, so these are some of the locations where we could, uh, could place it. Um, cost and funding. Um, so uh, we've received some quotes. Um, uh, the first quote we received was for uh, 1985 um, um, pounds, but this would this would be with the uh, the finials, you know. If if I go back one, so these things that you see on the top here, like like uh, like a, a curved thing on the top that these are called uh, finials. And if you would leave those out, uh, oh, sorry, the quote would actually be uh, a lot cheaper. So this would uh, uh, amount from 1295 would go down to approximately 800. Um, actually, um, so, so this whole amount is without uh, installation and exclusive uh, VAT. Uh, I have actually received an, a second quote uh, today in, where the total is uh, 800 pounds in total, also excluded uh, VAT and installation, um, and there is no for A4 notices. When you looked at the board earlier, I said, okay, there will be a Or there would be a clip frame that would be a clip frame. So, Ali, Ali, sorry, we just lost the last bit of the sentence. So, okay, so I have received a second quote as well uh, today, which is um, uh, a lot cheaper, uh, in total 800 pounds in total, exclusive VAT and um, uh, installation. But that board is slightly different with no inset or A4 notices, but the whole back of the board can contain a clip frame for notices. Um, funding, uh, come, uh, well, the easiest would of course be if Henry Town Council could do uh, this. Uh, but, you know, we could also go for a number of other organizations and venues to perhaps complement the funding in the town council uh, would not fund it all or, um, uh, you know, so we, we have been recommended a number of organizations and venues which we could approach. Um, if funding is provided, then of course these uh, funders organizations need to be mentioned, I think, on the, on the board. Um, uh, I do want to mention as well that, uh, so at the moment I'm just mainly looking at one side of the, of the board. However, it could be an idea uh, uh, coming from Walkers or Welcome that on the other side of the board, um, uh, perhaps we could have a dual purpose, one, one side with town notices, uh, bus timetables, for example, electric car hire, NP information, road closures, town events and public ex ad uh, advice notices, and then the other side, the walkers or welcome walks, for example. So that is also a, a possibility um, that we could look into. Uh, and then uh, the recommendations and the questions that I have to, uh, to this group is, does, uh, is that uh, does Henley Town Council think uh, it could be a good thing to have a display board like this in Henley? Does Henley Town Council have any initial comments on the design proposal? Would Henley Town Council fund or contribute to the funding? Does the council have a preference on where it should be placed? 
And would Henley Town Council arrange uh, or and fund the installation? And if the council is positive, the next step would be is finalizing uh, a design and proposal and then progress with funding request. Thank you very much. Any questions? Okay, thank you, Ali. Could you um, unshare the screen, please? Yes. Let me find the Zoom meeting. Oh, there it is. Uh, yeah. You have so many tabs on your desktop. How do you survive? <laughs> no. uh, stop here. There we go. Stop share. Ah, brilliant. Okay. Well, Ali, thank you. Thank you very much for a uh, for a. Uh, for a very good presentation and, and it's very very clear um, there are um you, you know, decisions to be made and 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 things to talk about i i think personally it's it's a great idea uh, we we've always been friends with walkers of welcome and um to actually think that henley would become a hub for um you know, you know the spoke in the wheel for people to come to henley and go and go off on walks uh, would be good. So, um, members of the committee, any initial? I would f forget the locations at the moment and forget the, the costing and the funding. Let's have a just a discussion about broadly whether we we like the idea, uh, and then we'll go into other things. Lawrence, uh, I think the presentation was great, very informative. Uh, Love the QR code links uh, to the walks and bits like that. Um, I can only speak for myself, as it were, but, you know, my preference, if I was looking for walks, the first place I would look would be on my phone, as it were, and the web. So purely for me, uh, you know, more than happy to support. And if, the, if, you know, if, you need, if you need funding for helps with bits like the website or an app or the QR codes and bits like that, you know, more than happily with that. But I can't say I'm hugely in favour of doing a board by which to display them on, as it were. But that's purely just for me, it wouldn't be the medium that I would look to to find the walks, as it were. But otherwise, I think it's it's a great initiative and I would certainly use the QR codes. I can easily share them on work social media and now that we've got a great um you know kind of web and social media platform at the henny town council and a new website again it's something that we can throw some weight behind okay thanks lawrence anyone else david dave McEwen. Uh, you're on mute dave You're still on mute. Yeah. Ah, okay. Got there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hear me. Hear me right. Oh, just to say, excellent presentation, Ali. Um, and um, yeah, it really, really well. Uh, the boards are well designed and so on. Very thoughtful. A lot of thought went into it. So, so yeah, I think it's a great idea. Um, being a bit of a technophobe, <laughs> I quite like the idea of the um, the the actual boards being there. Um, and I'd say, yeah, you want one one possibly at the station where hopefully encouraging people to come to Henley by train and then and uh, sort of walk from there. Um, and then one in the town centre, whether a car park or, or a town square. Don't know, but yeah, that's my, that's my six penner. Okay. Anyone else or I'll chip in my two penny worth. It's, um, I, I like the idea of the board. Uh, sorry, mm -hmm. David. Well, I'll, I'll chip in mine and then I'll come to David, David Dickey. Um, right. I like the idea of the board because I think it's a visual symbol that we are supporting Walkers are Welcome. Um, we've got to sort out the location. We've got to sort out the funding. Certainly, you know, the whole of the cost of this funding should not fall exclusively on Henley Town Council. Bit, but there are other routes. We can do SODC grants, SODC tourism. There are also councillor grants that we could use. So I don't see the funding as an obstacle. Um, and I think having the QR codes on it means that we meet all markets, both markets. We can actually get the information onto the town website. So therefore we can, we can have the links going forward to there. But I think as a statement of saying that, you know, 
we are a walk as a welcome town, um, it is a good idea. Um, I think we would have to initially just go for one location. And of course, the three you've chosen, the station is Network Rail, Grays Road Car Park is SODC, and Singers Park is um, probably not a good idea because it's not a starting point. Um, whereas Grays Road Car Park, people can drive their cars, park, and then look at the sign, and that's where they start from. Um, the station is obviously arriving by train and starting from that point. Okay, David, David Dickey, David. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> my my query, I suppose, is uh, is one: How would it be used if you're coming to Henley? Uh, see, I don't see myself driving into a town, looking for a board, and then deciding where to go for a walk. I, t I, you know, I would want it in other ways, and, and it would have to be. A, and if it is done that way, it would have to be in many places across the town, not just in one. So I think I'm with Lawrence a little bit in terms of it. It's going to be better on the web. You look it up and then you decide what you're going to go and do. But it is good publicity for the town. Therefore, I think it's much more. Uh, and, and I like the design and I think it, there ought to be something we ought to display. We are keen on walkers of welcome a bit more to, to everybody. And, and then the word will spread that it's there and you can have the web link, you know, someone can take it away and then start to work with it. But I think it's going to be something that starts people to think about walks rather than you come and you decide which walk you're going to do. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but that's just how I feel. And uh, so the placement, I think, ought to be for the right reason, not for, you know, maybe the, the, the way it would not be worked. And I agree with you, Singer closes where people are walking already. So they don't need anything to do like that. So, you know, it is a difficult decision, but um, and, and that will be done later, no doubt. But I feel it's more one of it's displaying, it's publicising walks, and then people will get into the planning and doing whatever they're going to do in another way, probably on the web. Thank you. Dave McKeown? Yeah, I just say, don't don't forget, as Ali said, it's also for residents, not just for visitors. Um, so I think to have a board in the town centre somewhere would be would be a good thing. It's just the right the raising awareness bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Ian? Uh, Ian? What about marketplace for the for the board? I mean, uh, most people end up walking through marketplace at one point. Uh, it's a reasonable starting point because it's by the great, it's near to, to both car parks. Uh, and um, it, I, I think it, it's not over cluttered at the moment, uh, marketplace. So there, there would be a potential spot for it. But uh, I, I can see arguments either way for having boards. I mean, I think Lauren, Lawrence makes a fair point. Uh, people have, as has as already been clear, people have different ways of picking up this sort of information and catering for as many people as possible seems sensible. Well, I think certainly on the electronic bit, I mean, Ali, we should introduce you to Naomi, who is our communications manager and deals with the website. And so you can uh, used to have a, have a chat with her. <clears throat> we do have a signage project and a, a signage project working group where we were looking at electronic um, electronic signs at the station and at the bottom of marketplace, Ian. Um, although no decisions have been made on that um, as to where we're heading. Um, but what I will do, I'll, I'll suggest to Ali, we've, we've heard our comments. Um, I'll give you the opportunity to you know, come back. But you've heard our comments. And I think the idea is to go away and maybe Fiona, me and you get together to see whether there's a way forward on, on this and um, as I say I wouldn't let the funding put you off because I think that can be overcome it's really the message of the location that's the important thing can I can I just say Stefan I, I would hate to have electronic signs anywhere in the town however that, that that's a personal opinion <laughs> yeah. uh, 
<laughs> well, that, other people may may have different views. That's for another committee, and we've yeah. we spent a whole year talking about these and got nowhere. So maybe you will maybe you will have your wish come true. <laughs> Ian. Thank you very much, everybody. Oh, was there more comments? Yeah. yeah. Lawrence? Uh, you're on mute, Lawrence. I was going to say it might be nice to potentially, you know, the town council to, I'm not sure if we actually have one already, but to consider a board that we have changing information on, as it were, so that, you know, week by week, month by month, we can put a new, you know, nicely printed up A0, A1 within the frame, as it were. It's something that we used to use outside work quite often and it worked quite well. Uh, but that is something that we could certainly consider. And then we could utilize it for, you know, yes, promoting the walks and all sorts of bits like that, but also have changing information of uh you know uh, public consultations and that sort of stuff that we could pop yeah, into true. i just my, my worry is that you know once you install a sign it's it's almost out of date within months of it being there should it be any changes and you know once you've read it a few times to be honest it's just an annoyance in the town is it right yeah sorry okay ali we'll leave it at that um pop away but do come back and uh, talk to us talk to us further and again as members of the committee have said thank you for your clear presentation and also your paper that you that you've put together for us thank so, you uh, yeah okay thank you, thank you very much okay. yeah thank you. i will uh, leave the meeting thank you yeah okay thank you um fiona walking signage project thank you stefan so um there's a paper in your pack on on page eight updating you on the walking signage project so whereas Ali's lovely walks were largely about recreation, this project is trying to encourage people to walk into the centre of Henley as part of their, um, their routine daily activities rather than take their car in and so help improve air quality in Henley. Um, what you have in this paper that you haven't seen before is a um, detailed indication of where the signs uh, could go. Um, and also a suggestion that the sign on Peppard Lane um, might um, be slightly different from the others and use existing posts that are already there. And the reason for that is that the location um, already has uh, a lamppost and a cycling post and other street furniture, a bench and a bus stop. And so it might uh, create a better look to put the walking information on an existing post rather than to add um, another post. Um, I should also say we had some feedback from Kester George, um, which I'm very happy to, to include um, uh, in the project. And he wanted uh, me to double check the, um, the walking times that we've included. He was just questioning some of those. So I'll make sure that, um, that those are accurate. Um, before we go ahead. So it was just really an update to make sure that you're happy with the way that the project is going and you'd like me to continue um, with procuring and um, installing these signs on the locations indicated. And, and some of the locations are town council uh, locations. So that will have to go to, um, to other committees um, to get, a, get approval for those. Um, so yes, I'm just asking you to, to really note the report, give me any feedback and um, let me know you're happy that I'm delegated to, to carry on uh, and, and get these signs installed. I mean, the overview of this is that we were wanting the signs to indicate to people that look, leave your car at home and if you walk from here, it's going to take you two minutes or it's going to take you five minutes to get into the town. That was the uh, that was the thing, and we we will it will attract funding from OCC and and all, OCC now and also SODC as well. So it um, so it was that right? Um, any comments? Is Iroko a natural wood? I, it's, I, an, I, sound, it's, a, sound, it's an African wood. Okay, right. Iroko, <laughs> it's actually used for. I know a lot about Iroko because I've actually worked with it, and it's it's absolutely rock solid hard. It's actually used for um, 
posts that you put in um, keys for big ships to tie up against. So it's impervious to seawater. It's impervious to anything. You try and drill through it, it's like going through concrete. So uh, yeah, it's a it's natural wood. <laughs> that works for me. There you are. The only bit of expertise and information you get from me <laughs> is that. It's, uh, uh, anybody else? Okay, so Fiona, I suggest you, yep, carry on. And hopefully we'll, we'll be into conversation with John Beale of OCC to actually, um, you know, get these approved and, you know, and bought and, and design. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. Right. Item three. And again, Fiona, um, to agree as recommended by the Chiltern Society that no action is required on historic lost paths. Um, what's, what's all that about? Um, so we've received, the council has received from the Chiltern Society a detailed report on um, lost paths, which I've included in your meeting pack. Um, and they've gone through um, paths that were identified as possibly having been lost. Um, but actually having looked at them in detail, the recommendation of the Chiltern Society is in fact no action is required on these paths, but they wanted to make sure that uh, the council was, was happy with that position and, and get any further information um, from councillors um, about um, the decision not, not to, to pursue these, these paths. Uh, page 18 of your agenda. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts, comments? Any thoughts, comments? I, I think if it's the, I, it, I think it's the it sounds like a very easy thing to say, but if the children's society are happy to not take any further action, they're more than happy to bow to their knowledge. Who's got a secondary speaker? Got a secondary speaker? Really annoying feedback. Yeah, we have got an echo. So, Lawrence, could you say that again and I'll turn my... No, I was going to say more than happy to go the recommendation from the Chiltern Society. You know, they know far more about it than I do even after reading the report. So. No, Steph has Sorry, a I'm on mute. Sorry, should we take it as that then? So Fiona, you, you yeah. progress on that basis. Yeah. Okay. Thanks very much. Uh, right, item six, road crossings. Very, very quickly. Um, as you all know, we had a, a Grays Road crossing uh, put in you know, about nine or ten months ago, and uh, it was the council's wish that there were two more um, pedestrian crossings, one on Gravel Hill and one on Sis Twist Farm. Those have been approved by OCC. Um, the Gravel Hill one is going to be completely funded by OCC, cost of about £26,000. And that is being implemented in September. So that's going to happen very, very quickly. Um, the second one, the Swiss Farm one, and that's a zebra crossing, so it's just Belisha beacons. Um, the Swiss Farm crossing is, is a bit more beefy because of the speed of traffic. It has to be a Pelican crossing yeah, with the uh, traffic light system on it. Um, and we're, we're awaiting costings for that. So that further information will come through uh, the planning committee of Henley Town Council. So that was just my, my verbal update on that. One crossing is going in in September. The other one will come at some point. Right, okay. Um, right, item seven, cycling projects. Lawrence, have you recovered? Yeah. Stefan tried to kill me on an electric bike on the hottest day of the year. <laughs> I will happily say he completely whooped my butt around town. <laughs> well, I tried valiantly for about the first 10 minutes and I used the climb by the Henley College to really try and stay ahead. But uh, yeah, it was hard work. <laughs> 
you did very well and I, i'm sorry i didn't even realize it it was you know, was it last wednesday yeah. it was you know the hottest day of the year yeah. uh, lawrence and i went uh, around the town on on well i was on my electric bike and lawrence was on a normally aspirated version <laughs> and uh, and we cycled the the past that we have always thought could be quiet routes and well uh, lawrence will speak for himself I, I think we confirmed that these routes are viable uh, one is from tesco via vicarage road trinity school church street past the henley college hop gardens abraham's estate prima's meadow we arrive at the fair mile a really nice cycle route um the second one is tesco uh, waterman's road and then up on the existing peppard cycleway to gillett's corner which is a fabulous cycle ride and then down valley road and deanfield road to the college and then on and then the other one which we have always wanted is the one behind the um Invesco perpetual building and station road yeah that one um and we even discovered you know, i think the sign that we wanted because outside by the tesco roundabout outside the um retirement home what's it called manor is that manor court i think it is yeah by the old jet garage there is actually a very very short cycleway with very small white cycling signs but they're actually a lot smaller than the ones that john beer was wanting things about this big they're a lot smaller so that we will um have signs that are that are basically small and give an indication of the route going forward um, it will be coupled with a map as well but anyway that's the report back lawrence um whether you want to add anything no, I think it's great. I think the the signs that are already in existence are sort of uh, they're like little blue signs like that with you know a bike on it and then some white bikes potentially painted on the road. Twofold, um, obviously gives you know cyclists you know knowledge of where they're going, which they most likely already will. But I think it also raises awareness to other road users, you know, mostly cars that the bikes you know are meant to be there as it were and that we're a bike friendly town you know i think you know having these three routes is great but you know they won't just be beneficial on these routes it will actually make henley on the whole you know safer and more friendly for cyclists on every route you know the more the more bikes we get out in town the more uh, more helpful our road drivers might become or if they hate cyclists that much they'll stop driving into henley so it's a win-win either way <laughs> true true um this will come to the next meeting because we, Lawrence and I have got to have a meeting with John Beals from OCC to actually you know, flesh these out. I, I, I know, promised Lawrence after the cycle ride that I would map the route out, which I haven't done. I, I think you should take John for a cycle around the route on your electric bike as well. <laughs> yes, yes, true. Yes, yeah. Um, Dave. Uh, you're on mute, Dave. Right, OK. Um, yeah, all in favour of what you're, you're trying to do and the routes generally sound, you know, sound good. Uh, my concern will be um, two things. One, coming out of Church Street. Um, that's, I think, it's an incredibly dangerous junction. Just getting out of it in a car, as we um, often have to do, you've got to get to the middle of the road before you can see up, um, up Grays Road. Um, and also there's a slight bend coming from the other direction the town. Anyway, so it's a really bad junction. I, I think you need to consider um, how that's handled from the cyclist's point of view um, to make sure people stay safe. Um, the other thing is, just recently, um, stepping outside of our front door onto the pavement, um, I've twice uh, nearly been uh, run over 
Once by an electric scooter, which is all right, another matter. Um, but the other occasion was by a child on a bike. Um, and of course, what happens is that people come along on their bikes past Trinity School, hopefully get off on the bit that's that's footpath. Uh, but then the bit of Church Street that's got gravel on it, cyclists don't like cycling on the gravel, and I understand that, but they then cycle on the footpath. Um, and it's another you know, potential issue there, I think, just to flag up. Okay. Lawrence? Why is that piece of road gravel? I mean, I do cycle along the gravel because I'm too old to cycle on a footpath legally. Um, mm. But who's responsible for that? And why is it? It's, that it's a private road, so... Um, I guess the residents who live along that bit are responsible for it. I don't know. Don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, David Dickey. Yeah, I, well, your overall comments about the cycle paths around Henley are places where I go quite often. And I think you're quite right. They're, they are viable. Uh, but I agree with the gravel along that part of the road. Sometimes you're skidding around and it's, it is easier to go on the path. Mm. Um, or the, you know, so it is very awkward. It would be very nice to something. I think coming out of Church Street is dangerous. And I'd also like to comment about how do you come from Tesco across Reading Road? Because sometimes that can be quite tricky too. There's a zebra crossing at that point already, which is quite good. So you've just come across the zebra crossing? Or near yeah. enough, yeah. Okay. Is there thoughts about going down to Down Mill Lane and be able to use the riverfronts and things? It's contentious with the fact that the towpath, we shouldn't maybe be encouraging more cyclists to use than already do use it, seeing as we tried to ban them last summer anyway. Okay. When I say okay. we, it wasn't me, but... Uh, no, no, but, you know, <laughs> we in a collective sense. Yeah. Okay, thank you. But those will be my comments in the areas okay. where I would... Thank you. I think the bottom of Church Street is definitely, you know, a slightly harder junction. But um, my observations with it is it is used so frequently either by both commuters, school runs, children and bits like that, that it there are there are quite commonly there are people crossing it. So I'm hoping it's a junction that, you know, people are slightly more cautious with already, as it were. Um, if not, I guess we could always look at a very small finger sign, you know, warning people that, you know, there's a crossing point coming up, you know, like a crossing ahead or. Stefan is great yeah, yeah. at getting zebra crossings installed, so we can always look at that in the future. <laughs> no, I would fail down the bottom there. It's too that's too narrow and too crowded. I would, mm. yeah. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. But, uh, right. Okay. Well, this will come back hopefully in a completed form um, after we've yeah we've got the map and we will get the costings and hopefully get the get the okay from John Beal of um OCC and we can uh, conclude this project and uh, and Lawrence and I can go out on another cycle ride in the middle of winter to actually implement it or something like that anyway anyway thanks for that right okay eight air quality um David Dickey David okay there have been several things going on I'd like to make a comment of where we are on each of them um First of all, the main, there's three, four places where we do nitrogen dioxide measurement in the town. The major one is in Duke Street, and that still has peaks which have exceedances above the European limits or UK limits, uh, especially through November, December, January. It, it goes pretty high. And, and uh, so that is still a major concern. And I think SODC would agree with that. The second thing is we put in a new monitor at the bottom of Grays Road, which does nitrogen dioxide. It's got a few exceedances, but nothing like Duke Street. Um, and I'll come back to Partigas. And then we've been putting some diffusion tubes around the end of the, the north end round of town, and only one or two places like Crew Clothing gets quite high and Savile's Corner, but everything else looks very much in order. So our air quality seems to be getting better. The particulates have been quite low, well within limits. And, uh, and so that's where we are in terms of measurements. Thinking about why this is so, because um, I, I remember that 
by earlier measurements said Grays Road was the worst part of Henley. At that time, when I was standing and walking around the town, I was occupied by the number of HGVs, vans and everything that were always queuing there. If I cycle down into town now, I'm regularly seeing three or four cars to the traffic lights on Reading Road and nothing else. I think our, our traffic characterization has, has really changed quite dramatically and it may be through COVID. And I think some of the traffic has changed in HGV terms because of Brexit. Because I, you know, since being back from holiday, I've done about four or five walks around the town. I don't think yet I've seen a European number plate. They're just in not, not in existence anymore. And they used to use our routes regularly. You, if I went down, there'd be a few every day, but now there seem to be none. So I've been reflecting on where we are. We see, it does seem to have got better. And I think it's, there are multiple reasons. Um, and you've seen my report. I presume. Uh, I think COVID has changed people's characterization. I see people walking and cycling down into town from my part of Henley much more than I used to before. So fewer cars are probably going into the town. I think we've done a lot of good work in terms of the air quality program. There's no idling going to the schools. They are walking much better. If I go and talk to the heads, they're saying their children are walking to school much more than they did before. So that message, but there's lots and lots of little things that have made our town a little bit better. Um, and I don't know whether people agree. I think there's electric cars. The hybrids are getting better. There's much more start-stop technology. I think I have five cars um, in Duke Street waiting at the traffic lights. And as the lights change, boom, all the engines started up. That They weren't there before. They were, you know, so there's lots of little things that are all improving the matter. And... Uh, and I don't know if that accumulative effect is, is it's the result of, of what's happened. But uh, I'm pleased that it's got better. It's not all over, but it has got much better. But uh, that's how I feel about right now. Lawrence, sorry. I was going to say, you know, it's obviously, well, it, it's great news in the one sense that it's better. I guess it's bad news if we wanted further help from maybe OCC or SADC or greater powers in order to yeah. pay for more measures. Um, but the fact it has got better and that we can put at least a few theories as to why, and certainly the hard work that you've done with the schools and the anti-idling and bits like that. Now that we've got the numbers on how it has improved, it's a good opportunity again to get this out on the HTC website and maybe see if the Henny Stand or the Henny Herald want to run with it twofold a to you know complement the hard work already done but also to encourage further steps to be taken because i think you know if residents be it parents or walking down to you know coffee or crew clothing realize that it's actually having a numerical numerical and tangible impact we might encourage even more to do so as it were so i think that is you know that is great news for the you know both of our news outlets and the website to really build on encourage on and then see, you know, almost set the town the challenge, you know, like next time we present the numbers, can they be even better than this, as it were? Well, I do think it depends on COVID recovery. In terms of if business starts to increase and go and white vans start to appear more in the town, yeah. then you then you may see a rise again. So I don't think it's gone away, but I no. don't think it's going to go back to where it was. No. And it's useful having this little saw uh, in Duke Street, which someone still has to you know, work on and get uh, get that down to a really good level, then we would be in really good shape. Well, annoyingly, the only way to make better judgments is to have, ra well, not random, but, um, you know, traffic counts at certain yes. times that we repeat week on week, you know, volunteer and a clipboard type stuff, so that at least we could put nine HGVs and 62 cars in an hour against some sort of weekly tally, as it were. But short of doing that, I think it's hard to draw any hard and fast yeah. conclusions. No, no, no. It's difficult to say there's a hard and fast one, but there is a lot of evidence that could say they could be having an impact. Oh, no, I think it's brilliant, yeah. David, could I just ask a couple of things? Um, just a bit of information for the committee. Um, down at the bottom of Grays Road, uh, near the Screaming Frog, we have this new monitor, which is the, uh, the Knox monitor and the particulates PM... 2.5, which are the tiny particles, and PM10, 
the you know the slightly bigger particles and we installed that i when fiona told me this we installed this last july and it's been there for a whole year um it took us a year to find a location and then we we've, we've had it for a year i was staggered that it's been there for a year but um and it, but it has indicated that in fact the levels at the bottom of Grays Road are below UK levels and below World Health Organization levels as well. But there are peaks. I mean, I, I David, as you know, I do a council report on particulates, and I see. Um, and the thing is, the the data that will come from. Uh, Ricardo, who do the do the monitor, it's on annual averages. <laughs> That's the problem. Um, so it's an annual average for during the night when there are no cars about, during quiet times when there are no cars about. But if you look at actually the data on the day, you will still see exceedances. You will still see levels above the the w the world health organization limit now there will be a report on this on this coming to planning um at some point because henley town council funded this project um jointly with sodc so we've got to put a report together um but i'm actually very keen to actually stress that there are exceedances above the help the safe 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 level because it does have implications for the health of people in hand it also has implications for the next item on the agenda which is the hgb campaign because one of the planks was that henley is a polluted town and 30 percent of it is caused by hgbs so we, we've got to have a bit of care in actually saying well in my opinion but it's only my opinion a bit of care in actually saying Henley's a clean town. Um, okay, I'll stop. Any other comments? <clears throat> Your figures last night that you presented to full council certainly showed that there were frequent peaks above the World Health Organization limit of 10. Yes. Uh, and, and, and less frequent, but still fairly... Fa there are at least three or four above 25 uh, on the figures that I saw for the 10.5, uh, 10, 10, 10 and 2.5 uh, particulates. And, um, and so there is still a problem, um, clearly. I think there's no doubt that traffic has gone down. The last 18 months have seen a reduction in traffic because of the various lockdowns, particularly the one uh, in spring of last year. And what I'd like to see is a... Uh, is, a, is a measure is whether the county council or the uh, or the, or the uh, uh, English or British governments have got figures for overall traffic levels o over the last say three years, so we can we can achieve a comparison uh, between the traffic now and the traffic a couple of years ago, and we would expect it to return to something nearer to that, whereas it's still probably below because the pandemic is, is only, only recently uh, got over. And what I'd like to see is a, is a correlation between the levels of traffic and the levels of pollution. I might see those mapped together so we can see how closely they fit. And I suspect they, they fit pretty well. Uh, and so we can show that the traffic levels are lower now, uh, but when they increase, so will the pollution levels of nitrogen dioxide and, and particulates. So I, I, if we can get those traffic figures from uh, uh, from OCC or, uh, or or TRL or or Department of Transport, I think those would be useful. Maybe maybe the district or county are better place to get those, but they will be useful figures, I think. Okay. Are there any other comments, folks? Okay. Well, David, thank you for your analysis on that. And thank you again for all the hard work that you do in, um, you yeah, know, with Ramsey and yeah. clipboards and visiting schools to educate children and parents on it. And you're right, it's, it, it's you know, getting better air quality is the sum, it's like a jigsaw, isn't it? 
it's a little bit from here, a little bit from there, and hopefully, you know, over time, it will it will get better and better and better. Yeah, we started off by saying it was going to be about behaviour change, and when someone says, "Why has it gone down?" you look for a silver bullet. It's a bit of a, bit of a strange sort of analysis, but it's not there. And when we went through and looked at all the things that were happening, hey, they're all helping, and it's good news. Yeah, yeah. And on Ian's point about my report to full council last night, I'm looking now at the PM 2.5s and we've got readings of 10, 50, 30, 20, yep. 20, 20, 25, 20, 20, uh, 40, 10 and 20. That's over a month period. Yep. So there are exceedances. A few years ago, when we started on nitrogen dioxide only, we had the same sort of thing, the graphs, the peaks. We said, look at the peaks, look at the peaks. And everybody kept saying, no, you've got to look at the averages, you know, but we knew we had a problem and you just got to keep saying, I've got, I've got peaks, I've got peaks. And then people will start to listen and do something about it. But you've got to keep driving it home. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Right. Okay. Thanks very much. Um, eight, Two, update from me on the HGV environmental restriction. Um, as you're aware, um, before May, I got a resolution passed at um, Oxfordshire County Council um, to actually investigate a seven and a half ton limit for Henley. Um, and I have uh, news just to tell you that um, on the 20th of August, I will be meeting with uh, four OCC officers um, to actually progress this thing. And we are basing it on <clears throat> an env environmental seven and a half ton limit, which is pollution, which we've just been talking about. It's historic buildings, it's narrowness of pavements and danger to people. So it's based on those four, four planks. So the only thing I can say is the meeting is going to take place. I hope at the meeting the officers are going to tell me, right, in order to get this seven and a half ton, you will have to do this study and this study and this study. But I will just have to wait for them to tell me what they think is needed. And then I will come back to this committee and, and we'll shepherd it through full council as well. Um, does anybody want to ask any quick questions on that? No. Okay, right. Thank you. Dave, Dave McEwen, Car Club. This yeah. is one of the, well, well, certainly for Dave, one of the great achievements that it's taken <laughs> five years to do. And, and it's a great achievement for this committee that we've actually done it. And uh, we've got 50% funding from SODC to do it. So mm. over to Dave. Go for it. Yeah, thanks, Stefan. Um, and <clears throat> I'm giving the report sort of on behalf of uh, me and Fiona, who's done um, a lot of the uh, nitty gritty um, work on this. Um, uh, broadly good news and uh, quite a lot going on. So um, we've had got the latest stats from Co-Wheels as of Monday, um, and they give us three or four different figures. The main one, I think, is, is the, um, the number of members, which is now up to 27. Um, and I think just to put that in context, uh, co-wheels tell us that um, on average, it needs 35 members to support a car club car, i.e. for it to be um, self-funding, if you like. Um, so those 35 would encompass a, a, a range. Some people who use the car occasionally, some people who are using it um, you know, a lot. Um, so 27, we're well on the way to... Um, you know, to break even point on the first car, which is which is well ahead of where we um, where we expected to be perhaps at this point. Um, so that's that's all good news. Um, and the the second thing to report to you, which is um, which is really good, is that um, Fiona has sorted out the um, bay for the second car. Because at the moment we've got two cars behind the town hall, um, but it was always the intention that one of those moved down onto the Reading Road um, outside Gibbs and Dandy. Um, so the TRO has gone through um, for that. Um, and now the bay is about to be 
marked out. Um, 10th of August, is that right, Fiona? In, in fact, the, the, the painting of the bay has, has been completed. Oh, it's been done, um, right. But okay. the, the, legal, the, legal, the legal paperwork, paperwork will come through by the 10th of August. Okay, and um, so, so that's all good news. And um, we are planning an official launch. We weren't able to do an official launch back in April when, the, um, when we took delivery of the cars, um, you know, because of COVID and, and so on. So um, the mayor has agreed to, um, to come and um, launch the car club officially um, Thursday, 12th of August. Um, we hope as many councillors um, and members of the Transport Strategy Group will come along as, um, as can make it. Um, it will be to coincide with the timings of the market. Um, we're going to put a car, a car will be booked out and put on the apron in front of the town hall. Um, and then we've, we've got a bit of space um, further down near a Starbucks where we can have some balloons and a stall and, and people can get information um, about the car club. Um, we've also got co-wheels coming down for that. So they're going to have their um, iPads and things and, and also the, um, be, able, be able to show people the car, how you get into it and answer any questions about, about the club. Um, I think that's, that's that. So um, in conjunction with that, it's obviously in a, a good chance to get um, more publicity, be, publicity about the car club. And we will then be leafleting within a 10 minute walk of the car that's going to be outside Gibson Dandy. And what we did um, when we did our first lot of leafleting and got publicity in the local papers, um, we did it within a 10 minute walk of um, the town hall. So the whole Reading Road area, um, which is a, a key target area for the, for the car club, lots of housing there, people living in that, that um, where, where you've got people living who are likely to be joiners of a car club. Um, so we'll be leafleting uh, down there to coincide with, with this um, and, and making sure we get publicity again in the local, local papers and on social media. Um, that's that one. What else is going on? Um, yes, uh, Fiona has um, set up a, a meeting for me to go and talk to Soha um, about the car club. And um, that's part of this trying to get out to talk to local businesses. Um, it's interesting that, that one of the members, uh, one of those 27 members, is a local business. Um, because of uh, data protection, we don't actually know who, <laughs> which business it is, but there's somebody making good use of it um, at the moment. And um, hopefully we can at least find out at some point who they are, what type of business it is and what they're using it for. But anyway, um, the SOHA meeting is to talk to them about a car club. And it's in particular, as and when they do any um, revamping of properties or redevelopment, um, like there's a redevelopment at Mount View being, um, being planned, um, that then they would consider putting in a car club car then, which would be um, focused on their residents and getting them to use it, um, but obviously also available for other um, residents in the town. Um, I, I am trying to get out to see, I'm going to be trying to get out to see local businesses and talk to them. Um, but apart from just one estate agent, I haven't got any further than that. Um, and the, a couple of other points. Um, one is there was the Premier Inn application that's, um, that's gone in. Um, this is, well, there's various issues around with it, but um, from the car club point of view, this is a golden, if, if it were to go ahead, it's a golden opportunity to actually get a couple of car club cars put in. Um, so we put in an objection to, I put in an objection to, um, to the Premier Inn because it goes against existing planning policies um, on air quality and uh, congestion, you know, traffic, and so on. So it goes against South Oxfordshire planning policies. It's also against the neighbourhood plan. Um, and it also works against what we're trying to achieve in transport strategy because of the extra um, journeys that are going to be made in a private car to and from, to and from the hotel. Um, so 
that's gone in and we've asked for a condition to be attached to the um, uh, to the development, should it go ahead, that two car club cars are provided. Now, um, in addition to, to actually putting in the objection, um, I've also written to the property services manager at, um, at Premier Inns, um, mainly about their, their travel plan. Um, I don't know if anybody else looked at travel plan. They've actually got quite a good travel plan to encourage uh, their staff and visitors to come to the town using public transport, in particular, you know, the train, um, and for their staff to, to not use um, private cars. Um, and they mention about supporting and promoting car clubs. Um, but of course, at the time this was written, they weren't aware that there was a Henry car, Henley Car Club. So basically what I've been trying to do is to raise awareness of the car club with Premier Inns. Um, and so hopefully they will um, be sympathetic, um, but that behind that, we'll also be lobbying for um, there to be this condition attached that, that there should be um, two car club cars provided. Um, right, okay, that's enough on that. And that's, that I think brings you up to date on everything that's going on. Um, last point is um, just looking for the future. I think we, we here being just generally, I think um, Stefan and, and Fiona and I agree that all future cars should be in all future car club cars should be electric. Um, and I have written to Lawrence, who got my email, Lawrence, um, that to ask if you could um, look into the costs of, of um, EV charging points, sort of as and when, and, and any other issues that arise. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's not going to be straightforward, but um, it's just asking that initial question and, and sort of putting it on the table. Um, that's it, I think. Right, well, thanks for Anything much. I've forgotten, Fiona? <laughs> By the way, we won't, we will not in this committee wander into the Premier Inn debate. Um, thank you for the information about that. We're going to leave that completely to planning to do that. Um, yeah. Uh, Ken. Yeah. Ken. Um, David, you you said it was against the neighbourhood plan. Where, whereabouts did you read that? Because not, um, not what I'm reading at the moment. Okay. I can look it up and tell you. I can't tell you off the top of my head. Ken. Well, let me, let me just help you. RO4 to build up the hotel and bed capacity in Henley. So yeah. I'd, it'd be interesting to know where, where you read differently. Well, no, it, we, it wasn't about hosp, um, hotel bed capacity. It was about um, traffic and air quality and um, you know, congestion in the town. So um, if you just hold on, I might be able to... Hang about. No, I think this is a debate for another forum, to be honest. Uh, it's... Uh... Yeah. Okay. And if Dave and Ken, you get together off offline and 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 iron out whether it is or it isn't. So, uh, yeah. Dave Dickey. Dave Dickey. Yeah, I've got one very specific small point. Those cars that you relate to this hotel are they for the hotel people or for the town? No, that ah, uh, <laughs> they would be for general use. Um, but it's targeting two things. One is to encourage. Okay, fine. You've answered the question. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Right. It would be based there for the town to use and also the hotel guests. Yeah. Thank you. You clarify. That's all I wanted. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Dave, only, only question for me is, it seems to me as though businesses in Henley could well be a very good market for the car club because um, to have a car that you know, mm. businesses can call on, um, mm. you. Uh, so I, sort of, I wish you well going forward with that. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I mean, I think there might well be businesses who will um, you, you, who will jump at the opportunity, really. Uh, so as, as this one business already has. Um, so, yeah, I'll let you know how I get on. OK. Any other comments on this? OK, thanks, Dave, for that. Um, Fiona, vehicle charging points at Mill Meadows Car Park. This is an update um, on the project to install four electric vehicle charging points um, at Mill Meadows. Um, I'm now in contract negotiations with Joju. Um, I've sent them the latest standards from the new uh, EVIS, the Oxfordshire 
County Council um, electric vehicle infrastructure policy. So there we're trying to make sure that everything that we do with our project is consistent with the newly published strategy. Um, the other thing to let you know is um, concern was raised to make sure that when in the future the council wants to increase the number of electric vehicle charging points, they would be free to use whichever supplier they wished in other parts of Mill Meadows. Um, so I just wanted to reassure you that um, any restriction that there might have been in the contract with Joju that would limit the use of other suppliers um, has been changed so that we, the council is free in the future to choose whichever supplier it deems the most appropriate at, at that time. Um, so, so work carries on and I hope we can start installation later in the summer. Well done for that. Well done. Um, the electric vehicle infra infrastructure subgroup, Lawrence, um, any... Yeah, yeah no, it's going... It's going updates. Awesome. Had, a, had some good productive meetings already with Fiona, Patrick and Jackie. Uh, we've each got our tasks uh, to follow up from the last meeting last week. So uh, Jackie's uh, undertaking or heading up creating a survey at the moment to go out to many of the Soha homes uh, on Crisp Road, because what we're looking to try and do is highlight or well, we're trying to create a favourable survey that will prove that the housing along there and the land that they have could benefit from some EV charging points. Um, we're looking at different areas in the town that we ourselves, Henley Town Council, can obviously help fulfil the EV charging or the lack of EV charging. Obviously, the two main car parks are SODC, so it's loosely out of our hands. Although, as Fiona said, OCC have come out with a new strategy. Um, that strategy includes uh, aspects of how they're looking to use gullies uh, for kind of roads like Park, Marmium and Terrace Roads so that people can actually charge from their own homes if they do not have off-street parking. Uh, we are pursuing with SSEN, um, with also kind of help and advice from Joju as well, as to how best we can utilise the spaces that we already own as a council. So, you know, twofold. A, we can, you know, bring more charging spaces that we own that we control and that we can get some revenue from so hopefully get a head start on some of the others being installed uh, Fiona's done a great job with the bits down uh, by the river already and we hope uh, to go to SSEN with some clearer information on what we require on our own land so type of charger capacity of charger locations of the charger and hopefully some news from so hard that they might be in favor of using some of their land as well and then we can make a head start hopefully on quite a few charging locations if it turns out to be viable and if the capacity is there to be able to do so so we're at kind of a really good point of follow-up uh, next meeting we'll have various bits of news back from each of us with our tasks brilliant thank you thanks for that any um ian, ian? Uh, the last couple of items have both referred to sort of electric uh electric vehicle charging and uh, and Dave referred to the uh, the next gener the next generation of the car club cars being uh, um, being uh, electric cars but we should take into account hydrogen powered cars as well which seem to me a much better scientific solution and it, it a lot of the direction of travel so internationally seems to be uh, along electric vehicles but they have significant difficulties both in setting up charging points uh, but also, um, you know, the, uh, the the fact that they, they consume a, a large numbers of unsustainable uh, com uh, components in manufacture. So, uh, has this committee looked at all, or taken any interest in in looking at how we could help support hydrogen powered cars? For example, by uh, looking at whether or not the district council or county council is producing uh, uh, hydrogen fuel uh, fuel. Um, uh, 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 filling points uh, uh, as an alternative to electric vehicles. Lawrence? Uh, I was going to say from, I, I completely agree that it is definitely a potentially viable alternative in the future, uh, but at the moment there seems to be little um, commercial investment in it on a widespread level, as it were. So, you know, our, at a best guess, I'd say we're going to be a decade from, um, from considering that as a, as a mainstream option, as it were. 
but that would just there be are already market. such cars on the market. Oh, you know, of course, but there's been electric cars on the market for 15 years before they've become yeah, yeah. And got on top of but technology's cars. there. No, no, People of course, driving but, them. no, no, yeah, no, I don't disagree. I'm just saying, I think we're a long way from it becoming as mainstream as electric is currently heading. Ian, I will, I will take that on myself. I, I will contact SODC and OCC. Um, uh, and actually find out whether they, they do have any plans for hydrogen. Because, of course, you can have the hydrogen car. If you haven't got a, an ESO garage with a hydrogen pump uh, to actually deliver it, then then you can't go forward. So I, I, I will take that away, and I'll bring it back to the next agenda. Uh, I'll, okay, I'll thanks. That. Yeah. Okay, well, Lawrence, thank you for all the work. It's a big chunk of work, this. So um, thanks to Patrick and Jackie and you, and yourself for doing that. It's uh, it, it, it's really good, and uh, we can. Uh, it sort of came onto our agenda from from another committee. So, <laughs> Lawrence. Well, I was just going to say, uh, Ian, you can have a look. Uh, Oxfordshire County Council have something called the Hydrogen Hub. Uh, it's a website uh, that they've got in collaboration, I think, with McLaren. Uh, on developing hydrogen technology for future use. And that will probably give you an accurate kind of, of where they're at or where they're going as it were. It, it is being done, it's just not, it's just not yet. Okay, yeah. right. It, it looks to, I mean, if it is as long and far away as you say, it, it strikes me as a potentially missed opportunity. I mean, it, it's easier to refuel once you've built a single large station. And, uh, you yeah, know, the, 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 the cars are a bit more expensive, but uh, they, have, they have longer range and obviously they take much less time to, uh, uh, to refuel. Uh, and yeah, the, the, uh, yeah they're, they're lighter. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because of the hydrogen. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, they're not just made of hydrogen, Stefan. Yeah, they, they, no, are, no, no, they, no, they no, have no, heavy no, materials no, as well. I realise <laughs> that it's physics, of course, it's liquefied, so it, uh, it won't be lighter. So, they have lead uh, wheels so that they stay on the road, otherwise they just float away. <laughs> yeah. True. Fiona, great big green week. You have a paper on page 23 of the uh, of the agenda. Off you yes, go. thank you. Thank you, Stefan. And um, just to draw your attention to the fact that the great big green week is coming up um, in September, um, and to let you know in particular that... Um, SODC um, are planning an eco-business fair uh, based in Henley and they have invited um, the council to support that. So um, Tony Hoskins and I in particular, the chair of the Climate Emergency 2030 Working Group, um, have had a couple of meetings with SODC to talk about um, their ambitions um, for that event. Um, at this stage, I think it's fair to say that um, the scope of it is growing. Um, SODC, uh, it's becoming quite a big event. They're talking about um, having uh, Innovates UK and the Department for Business. They're also to talk to local businesses about funding. Um, the event will be free to attend um, and it's an opportunity for businesses to meet with uh, potential clients um, and potential recruits and also to share with each other um, how they are evolving their green practices. Um, so some of them will be talking about uh, green products that they make and others of them will be talking about how they are decarbonizing their operations, um, all those um, sorts of things. So SODC are leading and running this event and the town council is just um, asked to provide um, advice and support um, we have sent out um, requests for expressions of interest to 350 businesses in the RG9 uh, um, postcode area and also advertised on Facebook, including um, the Henley Business Pages um, Facebook page. Um, and we will see what response we, we get to that before confirming um, whether you know the event um, can go ahead, so it's really just to make you aware um, of those events um, uh, going on. Any question, Dave? Okay. I'll just say um, I'm sure Patrick will be sticking his hand up if he was here. 
to say that Green Henley are uh, working with the council and supporting the event that week. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, that concludes the meeting, apart from one more comment from me. We have been working on you know, a number of projects for a couple of years. Um, the particular monitor, the car clubs, whatever. And um, we are, well, they're ongoing. But all I was going to say to members of the committee, if you have any other ideas that we should be doing for Henley, then could you actually email Fiona and so we can create a new shopping list for the next two years going forward um, to actually do it more cycleways, more walking paths, more particular models and more whatever um, so that we can um, you know, keep the momentum going because we've actually done very well over, over the past couple of years, I think. And uh, Lawrence? I was going to say, I think on that, uh, I've seen other towns have like a, you know, like a walking Wednesday. So we pick a day of the week and we try and make it as many people on that day, try and prioritise walking into the town centre. You know, they're easy initiatives to at least start. And we've got so many groups helping and um, part of this now with the, the walking group and Greener Henley and you know, Dave and Tony and, you know, all, everyone, as it were, that I think we could really have some traction and prove this, prove a difference on that day of the week with very little cost uh, or investment. Good idea. Good idea. Well, uh, Ian, I seem to remember a couple of years ago we had a sort of list of action, of possible action items or action plan, which you know some of which, as you say, have uh, is underway. Some of which is uh, uh, is already running. Um, maybe if uh, Fiona could send that out, uh, it would uh, set us thinking, and uh, and we can uh, add to it as part of the uh, the next meeting. Add items to it, either items which we want to start now or which we want to think about in the future. We'll do. Right. Uh, so we'll we'll send that out as a discussion starter for uh, other ideas, um, as well as the wonderful one that Lawrence has just said. So that's good. Right. Well, thanks for your time, and uh, we'll see you at some time in the future. Okay.